Hi guys, it's Steffi from The Novelty Corner and welcome back to my channel. Today is day nine of Vlogmas. It is also my Books Beside My Bed video where I film a video every week talking about the books I've read in the last seven days. So for those of you who are very familiar with the series, welcome back. And for those of you who are new here, welcome. The first thing I'm going to say is that I sound absolutely terrible. I have had some medical issues this week, which has basically resulted in me being diagnosed with asthma because <laughs> Here in Australia, we have terrible, terrible allergy season happening, and now I have asthma. So I sound terrible, I don't feel that great, and I get out of breath really easily. So if any of that happens in the video, you know why. I do talk a little bit about this in a video that's coming up later this week. I actually, I am in the middle of filming a vlog. I am doing a weekend vlog for Vlogmas. I'm, well, I'm trying to anyway, and I do talk a little bit more about it in there. But if I sound out of breath, it's because I am, and I apologize. I will try not to speak too quickly. I struggle with that sometimes. Pretty much as a result of feeling pretty terrible for the last seven days, my reading has been good, but it hasn't been great. And I also haven't particularly enjoyed as many of the books that I have been reading as I normally would, but we'll go with it. So this is my reading week from the 1st until the 7th of December. I read four books this week. They're all adult women's fiction style books. I read a total of 1051 pages and my yearly reading total is up to 358 books. I'm still on track to sort of get to 365 books for the year which I'm, I'm happy about so that will probably still happen. This week I participated in two readathons, the Tis the Seasonathon which I completed some of the challenges but not all of them for and that's fine I'm I've had things going on and I also read the first book for the winter edition of the Magical Readathon hosted by G from Book Roast and I'll talk about that as I go through. When I haven't been reading, I've basically been lying on the couch watching reruns of Stargate Atlantis. So I finished season one, I think Sunday or Monday, and then I went straight into season two. And I forgot how many of my favorite side characters are, are introduced in season two. And it's made me so happy. I can't even tell you. For those of you who don't know, I was a massive, well, I still am a massive Stargate fan. And I love the movies. I love the TV shows. I love the spin-offs. Just give me all of it, but I haven't rewatched Stargate Atlantis for years and I'm just so excited that I'm doing it. And now I've been rambling for three minutes, so I should probably talk about the books. The first book that I read this week is my favourite book for the week, and that is Return to Stringy Bark Creek by Carly Lane. This is the third and final book in the Callahan's of Stringy Bark Creek series. It is a 2019 release from Alan and Unwin. I gave it five out of five stars and I adored it. Being the third book in the series, there's a whole lot of things that happen in the lead up to this book, particularly in the second book that sets up main character that sets up the backstory for the main character of this third book, Hadley, who is the youngest daughter of the Callahans. Hadley has just come home to Stringy Bark Creek. She's come home without her husband and her family sort of has questions, but she doesn't really want to talk about it. And there's a really big reason why she doesn't want to talk about it, which we actually find out in the second book. And it's something that has the potential to cause a lot of problems within the family. Well, potential. It is going to cause a lot of problems within the family. But Hadley has come home, she's taken a break from work, she's taking a break from her husband and she really just needs to be around family and she reconnects with her childhood friend Ollie who runs the neighbouring farm. They've known each other since they were kids, they've always gotten along. Ollie has always had a massive crush on Hadley but never really wanted to pursue her because he knew that she wanted to leave and she wanted to go and have this fantastic career that she was always going to succeed in. She's a foreign correspondent. He never wanted to put pressure on her to stay. Now that they've reconnected, they've discovered that maybe their feelings are mutual and maybe something can come of a relationship, but they're not really sure yet. So, I mean, that's the, that's the romantic subplot of the story, but there's another story in here that I thought was really, really important, and that is the pressure put on the farming community. There is a character in this story that commits suicide, and so a large subplot as well is how the community deals with this and how they deal with the grief and the fallout and how they try and raise the profile and the awareness of suicide in farming communities. And I thought that was really, really important. I have family who do work in the farming industry and it's hard. And I thought that was a really important message to put through, a, or to send through a book. And Carly Lane did it very respectfully. So I really enjoyed the story. I'm so sad that the Callahans are their story is finished, but I look forward to Carly Lane's next book. And then I read The Christmas Witch by Carla Caruso. This is a 2019 release from Escape Publishing and I gave it 2.5 out of 5 stars. I read this for the Tis the Seasonathon challenge to read a book that was holiday themed. 
and this follows the main character Mina who is descended from Italian witches. She's living in a small town, she works in a local antique shop and her boss has become ill and so she has to learn to work with her boss's son who comes in with these different expectations and wants to raise the profile of the store. Meanwhile Mina is sort of dealing with the pressure of her family. She hasn't got a, a boyfriend or a partner and they're on her about that. It's Christmas time. She starts to fall for her new boss. There is a subplot to do with the fact that Mina sells spells to people and suddenly it seems like the people that she's selling spells to end up in terrible conditions and then we sort of explore this world that has good witches and bad witches and, and all sorts of things. I just didn't really connect with the story or the character. I don't feel that sort of the magical side of the world was as in-depth as I probably needed to feel invested in it. It wasn't a bad story at all. It was enjoyable, but it's not something that I would reread. Then I read Wrapped Up for Christmas by Catelyn Duncan. This is a 2019 release from HQ Digital and I gave this one 2.5 out of 5 stars as well. I read this for the Tis the Season a Thon challenge to read a book with snow on the cover and I also read it for the Magical Readathon prompt to read a contemporary book set in the Muggle world. This story follows Angie who returned home to or returned to her hometown after she discovers that her boyfriend is engaged to somebody else and pretty sure he was also her boss and so she's left her job, she's left her partner, she's come home for the holidays, she doesn't have any money so she decides to get a job working at the local mall where she worked where she was a when she was a kid and she works in the information booth there. She meets Nick one day in a coffee shop and Nick is standing behind her in the coffee shop and when she goes to pay for her things it's declined and he pays for her and she's horribly embarrassed by this and runs out of the store and doesn't think she's ever going to see him again. And then they cross paths a second time. Nick himself is quite intrigued by Angie and at first he thinks she's quite rude because she runs away after he helps to pay for her things. But they reconnect and he becomes quite intrigued by her. And it turns out he is the son of the owner of the mall and he doesn't tell her that. So there's a, a lovely miscommunication plot that's going to happen because eventually she's going to find out that she is starting to fall for her boss again and she doesn't like that conflict of interest it's really sort of messed her up. It's all holiday themed and miscommunication plots and all that sort of stuff so it was again like the Christmas Witch it was okay but it wasn't great and what you're going to really discover is that women's fiction unless it's a very specific type of women's fiction is not my thing very much because the next one is also women's fiction and that is A, Quis a Christmas Wish and a Cranberry Kiss at the Cozy Kettle. This is a 2019 release from Bookature and I gave this one three out of five stars. It is by Liz Ills. I read it for the Tis the Seasonathon prompt to read a book and enjoy with Christmas treats. I have some gingerbread cookie type things that I was eating while reading this book. It follows the story of Becca who has had terrible luck in the boyfriend department. She's quite anxious and unsure of herself to the point where she's basically run away from her family, quit her job or had a meltdown at her job and basically escaped into this small town where her best friend Zach lives. And they live together as roommates and she works at a local bookstore slash cafe shop and she she runs the cafe. She decides that this Christmas she is going to change all of the things about herself that she can't stand which is basically everything about herself. She actually has very little self-worth and she decides she wants to become more like her sophisticated and beautiful twin sister who is quite successful in her career. And so she starts this list of things that she wants to do. She's also got a massive crush on a guy that she met at Zach's gym, Logan who is a very sort of successful businessman in town and after a series of unfortunate events that happen at the Cozy Kettle she ends up securing Logan's work Christmas function at the cafe and so begins the process of trying to organize that and do something successful and really grow the business on behalf of the owner. And in the meanwhile she's trying to become more assertive and trying to change herself and, and trying to do all of these things and what we see, what we see as the reader is that she's not actually making herself happier she's just making herself into someone that she thinks she should be and that while she's trying to win over Logan she doesn't really want Logan and so you have this sort of semi love triangle slash love quadrangle going on with Becca and Zach and Logan and another character and it was all just very mm, it was okay. Like there's nothing wrong with any of these stories they were just probably not things that 
I probably shouldn't have requested on NetGalley because the last three books have been NetGalley requests and I thought I would try them because they're all Christmas themed and I don't normally read Christmas themed books at Christmas time and I thought maybe I'll try it this year. That's backfired on me so there's that. So I mean the last part of the week was pretty disappointing but that's totally fine. Anyway my plans for the upcoming week are to get through the rest of the books that are on my book haul revisited for November December and I've still got four books and one of them is at a collection of two stories so there's five five books total. So let's play the TBR game and let's see if there's something that I can do during the week to get these books read. So here are my genre cards. Let's just shuffle shall we. Okay let's go with oh, dropping things on the floor. Oh YA sci-fi which is actually really handy because one of my books is a YA sci-fi. So I'm definitely gonna have to read The Rift this week. This is by Rachel Crawl. I'm pretty sure it is YA sci-fi or sci-fi dystopian. Or something like that. So I'll go with that. And what's my activity going to be? Oh, a Twitter review. I can do that. That's manageable. So that is what I have read over the last seven days and one of the things that I'm going to be reading next week. In the comments below let me know if you have read any of these books and what your thoughts are on them. Otherwise feel free to share what you have been reading over the last few weeks and what your thoughts are on it. I would love to have your recommendations. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're having a wonderful day and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.